I'm Tommy from Majestica, and you're watching Loud TV. Welcome on uh, Loud TV, Tommy. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Yeah, the same. Um, so the, your band, Majestica, was created 20 years ago. Almost wow. 20 years ago. Yes, uh, 17 years ago. Okay, so my first question is, how old are you? Because uh, when I interview uh, you uh, at Elfest, uh, you know, at the press conference, I thought you, you were something like uh, 20. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, I get to hear that uh, every now and then. The people think uh, I look uh, younger yeah. than, than I actually am. But I'm uh, turning... Uh, 33 in a, in a couple of days actually so you you started music very very young very early yeah i started with music i, I started playing guitar when i was nine wow when i was nine years old i started to play guitar and uh, then i uh, started to sing when i was 15 At the same time, I started to play piano to learn that as well. So, yeah, and uh, I mean, the first Re Rain Seed album I recorded when I was 18 years old, and then released uh, two years later. Yeah, you are born with uh, instruments. <laughs> I was born with a, with a guitar in my hand. Yeah, yeah. You, did your parents... Uh, Uh, bring you this um, is instrument easily, and uh, they they wanted to for you to to make music. Very young. N no, it was actually my own choice. My, my dad was playing guitar, and uh, you know he, he was playing guitar at home, and he had an electric guitar. And uh, then when I was nine years old, I uh, he showed me this video of the uh, out in the fields with uh, Gary Moore, and. That was like, holy shit, what is that? I don't know what it is, but I know what I want to become. I, I want to be him. I want to play and sing guitar. So I, I asked my dad to, uh, you know, teach me a couple of, uh, couple of songs, a couple of guitar tricks. And uh, that's how it started. And then I've always had this goal that I want to be as good as Gary Moore, you know, of course, not to be the new Gary Moore, there's only one, but uh, yeah, I started quite early and, you know, they tried to put me in, uh, you know, cars, uh, sports, uh, painting, theater, they tried a lot of things, but it always came back to, to the music. That, you know, whenever my dad or my mom took me to a, a hockey game, I always came back to play guitar. I was like, well, it's, it's, it's better to do something with your life, you know, so in some, something that you know you're gonna succeed in. Like, you know, study hard and uh, go to school, get a real job. But I always, uh, I always, you know, Of course, I, I listened to their advice, but I always knew that this is this is not for me. I, I, I'm going to do music, I'm going to play guitar, I'm going to sing. That's all I'm going to do. And believe me, I've sacrificed a lot to be able to do that, but it was worth it. I mean, now, now I do that. Uh, since 2011, I've been um, working with music as a, you know, having music as a living, paying bills thanks to um, music. So I'm very happy for that. Yeah. And you were talking about uh, Gary Moore. And mm -hmm. of course, you have heard about the um, uh, Van Allen. Uh, yeah. Guitar, right? I, yeah what, what, can you say as a, what can you say as a guitarist about uh, the Van Allen style, the Van Allen um, type of taping and stuff on the guitar? Well, Van Halen, I mean, 
I, I think I'm not ex exaggerating when I say that every guitarist, you know, ex metal guitarist out there today have some inspiration from Van Halen because him and Jimi Hendrix, they, Yngwie Malmsteen, you know, they brought something new to, to the genre, to, to guitar playing. And every time someone plays something fast, well, only a classical, well, that's Yngwie Malmsteen. Every time someone makes a cool guitar solo, lifts up the guitar, uh, or, you know, go over the edges with something new, that's, you know, Jimi Hendrix. Tapping, um, the way of, you know, playing certain uh, certain style, playing with a whammy bar, that's Eddie Van Halen. I mean, these three guys, they really brought something new to this world. And even though people say, well, Joe Satriani and Steve I, they came up with regional sounds and stuff like that. Well, of course they did, but they came from uh, from Van Halen and Jimi Hendrix. It's the same, you know, people say that Zach Wilde is the best guitarist that has ever played with uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Mm -hmm. And there's pe people about Randy Rhodes, who's that? It's a guy who died in a plane crash in Florida or something. Yeah, but if you listen to their guitar playing, it's very, very similar. So you can really hear that Zach Wilde, he, he started to play stuff that Randy Rhodes played. So, you mean, you, know, you need to start somewhere. And that's why, why it's so sad that Van Halen has died. Because he's one of those, the, one of the few guys who were alive that had actually, you know, changed the world of how we play guitar. What about you? Uh, the, the name of your band, Rancid, that transformed yeah. into Majestica? Yeah. Why did you change the name? Actually, uh, we changed the name for many reasons. <laughs> <coughs> I will. I will take this short. Uh, yeah. sh short answer is um, we needed a fresh start, really, um, because the we recorded uh, released six albums with uh, with Rainseed, and the last one none of us enjoyed doing. Uh, all the songs were. Uh, you know, old demo songs that were re-recorded. Uh, we had we had some issues with a with the drummer at that time. Uh, I was recording Rainseed, a new Swedish disco metal album, Golden Resurrection, and at the same time working as a studio engineer in a recording in a at a record label. So, you know, everything went to shit really. And we, we, we weren't even allowed to mix the album the way we wanted. So the record label just brought us the album. Here it is. And I remember, you know, when the album was released, we got a couple of albums to the record label. And he, they called me over and said, you, you need to get your copy of the album because it's here. Okay, cool. And mm -hmm. then they come and, they, and they're like, here. Here's your album. One copy. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I got one copy of the album. And that was the last thing I ever did with that, uh, with that company. Um, yeah, it wasn't handled pretty well, actually. So well, there's much more, more to it. Anyway, uh, it didn't get to a short answer any, anyway. <laughs> um, so when we recorded this album with Uli Kurs on drums in a new studio, very well written songs, there was joy back to the music. We felt when we're going to release this, if we release it under a new name, it'll be like we have a new fresh start. So, uh, and also because, uh, you know, we changed record label and there were some issues with the copyright and uh, it wasn't we weren't able to solve it so that's also a reason but mainly because we wanted to have a fresh start start over so to say and uh, it's easier as, as a band to come with a new album you know, like this is our first album and we're starting off here instead of releasing six albums that you know quality here and then we're releasing a new album here mm -hmm. which means that it would be like this 
the seventh album of a of of a power metal band from Sweden, or the first album, super high quality power metal, like uh, every who, people who loves power metal are gonna love this album because it sounds just like power metal should sound like. That's why we thought it's better to change name, and we did. But trust me, it was not easy. We had a lot of different name suggestions. None of them were f were good. And then Majestica, like a tribute to Majestic, our third album. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's already Christmas? Yes. And, it's uh, Christmas. We can, yeah, we can see the, the artwork. And um, so it's, um, it's a tradition in metal, you know, to... To play about uh, to to be inspired by uh, this uh, this uh, count this uh, this novel, um, Blackmore did it. Chris Christopher Lee did it. You know that. And the, no, I didn't know he did uh, a Christmas. Christopher Lee, you know the the actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so. What was your main inspiration? Uh, the novel or the music that you you listen to? Both, actually, because I always want to record a Christmas album. Well, I always want to release a Christmas album for many, many years, like at least ten years. I've been working on a Christmas album, but then it's like ah, it's not no time. I do something on Instagram instead and sing Merry Christmas. I release a cover on YouTube this Christmas but then you know corona struck nothing to do just you know being at home what to do well this would be a good opportunity to finish the Christmas album finally and uh, I started to record uh, uh, write some songs at home and then uh, we were talking in the band like yeah Christmas album it would be cool like yeah that's a great idea that we should do someday some year at some point in life <coughs> and uh, I came up with this idea of doing Ebenezer Scrooge you know the a Christmas Carol it's I always watch any kind of movie around Christmas uh, nowadays it's the Jim Carrey Jim Carrey version from 2009 brilliant mm. movie and um, I was watching that movie in uh, February, I think, and I thought, holy shit, this would, would be so cool to write a Christmas album about this. And then I was out running one day, listening to the soundtrack of, uh, of that to see if I can find something to, to use. Not, you know, steal, but get inspired from. Mm -hmm. And I listened to the album, I was like, holy shit, Alan Silvestri, he, you know, wrote Back to the, Mus uh, Back to the Future. And mm -hmm. He did the music to uh, to screw to Ebenezer, uh, a Christmas Carol, and it's like this would work so well in power metal. How about we do the story of Ebenezer Scrooge? And I start to write songs in my head, and I start to record a couple of demos sent to the guys. Hey guys, this is what we do. We're recording a Christmas album, and we're writing songs of our own using uh, famous Christmas melodies that are public domain. So we won't get sued and everybody will know something. You know, you, you listen to the story of how Jacob Marley comes and tells Ebenezer Scrooge, Ah, oh, I'm a ghost and you will be haunted by three spirits on this very night. <coughs> then, while that song happens, it's dark, uh, mystical, you know, spooky song, but you can still hear the holy shit, the chorus, it's actually Deck the Halls. And uh, uh, the intro is uh, all, you know this. Bam, 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 da, 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 da. That song starts right away. It's like, holy shit, I know that song. Now, <laughs> the, I know it, that, that song, which means I like that song. So now I like this song. It's a, you know, it, it, it's a fun way to try to connect with people by using melodies that you have, you recognize. And Christmas melodies, you always recognize every Christmas. Everybody recognizes every Christmas melody. That's just how it is. 
and you always have some kind of connection to that. Like Deck the Hall, for example. Every time I hear that song, I always think of about the end of the uh, Mickey Mouse, uh, you know, when they're standing outside uh, the window after the uh, Chip and Dale are running in the, in the Christmas tree, hiding and d destroying presents. At the end, the Donald Duck and uh, Goofy stands outside. Take the house with balls of holly. And so on and so on. So you always have some kind of connection to any Christmas song. And I that's why I, I, I thought this would, would be a great idea. Yeah. I like to the Muppets movie. Yes, okay. that is. Yeah, that's that. That's a good one, and that has actually been an inspiration to this uh, album as well. Some of the, you know, the music, how they sing, the, you know, this whole uh, Marley and Marley, we're Marley yeah. and Marley. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> it's like, well, if they can do it, so yeah. can we. We can also do a song about when Jacob Marley comes to Ebenezer Scrooge, and we did. There are a lot of um, tracks, a lot of um, uh, yeah, uh, you know the of course the the guitar, a lot of guitars, a lot of uh, vocals. Did you do your all the vocals? On this album, we have a lot of uh, guest singers and guest uh, voice actors. <coughs> we have uh, voice actors who do some, uh, you know, voice acting, uh, and we also have uh, ev everybody in Majestica is singing lead vocals. Okay. Not on not on every song, um, but uh, at some point of the album, you will after listening to the album, you have, will have heard everyone. Every member of Majestica singing lead. The the story of Jacob Marley and uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. That's a duet between me and the bass player Chris David. In our first single, you will hear Alexander Oris, the guitar player. He will sing lead. The first song, you will hear Joel, the drummer. He's singing lead. <coughs> so, because, I mean, when you look at the story, Ebenezer Scrooge doesn't really do much. Uh, he, he does uh, so much, you know, at the end, you, you, in, in the beginning, you see him being a, an evil man, you yeah. know, st stubborn evil man. But then when he goes around to the past, to the present and the future Christmas to come, he doesn't say more than, Oh, spirit, I will change. Oh, spirit, tell me these things are will not stuff that will happen or may that, I don't know. They're always doing, you know, that's like everything he does. The story is being played by other people. Uh, so, like, how can we do this? Me singing what's happening. It would be like I'm narrating the entire thing. And that would be, I don't know, boring. I'm, I'm doing that on one song. Uh, but then on the other songs, we, are, we have uh, The Ghost of Christmas Present, a duet between me and Anders from Beyondity, The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come. That has a lot of, you know, a lot of voice acting. Uh, you know, have you heard? He is dead. What a pity. Who you said? Ah, good riddance. You know, standing there talking. Uh, four guys talking. How nice it is that this guy is dead. And his Ebenezer Scrooge is standing there. Oh, tell me, spirit. Who are they talking about who is dead? I don't know. You know, so we, have, we need to add a lot of voice acting into the... To... To this to make it special to make it interesting to listen to and whoops you have a musical album so th thanks to that we were able to do a power uh, symphonic epic power metal christmas musical album so who are the other guests uh well we have anders from vionity and then we have uh, a guy called Hendrik from uh, my old band Hot Beef Injection. And uh, we have this woman uh, called Hanne, an uh, old Swedish name, uh, who's working together with a bass player. So she's uh, singing and doing some voice acting as well. But then we have Chris and Joel from Majestica doing different voice acting. I'm doing different voice acting that you will not hear that it's me doing doing that. But uh, 
So we don't have like 15 people on the uh, cast list, okay. but uh, <coughs> we have, uh, for example, Bob Cratchit, uh, Benicia Scrooge uh, employee. Hmm? Uh, he is being played by me, Alexander Oris, and Joel. <laughs> so, and then Cr Chris, he plays a little boy, Marley, Jacob Marley, businessman, townsfolk, people at the party, you know, uh, yeah, so, yeah, a lot, a lot of things happening. <laughs> Do you think, uh, because when you listen to the, to the album uh, for the first time, you know, it's kind of like a, it's new, new style of metal, it's a Disney metal, you know, kind of. It's yeah. uh, very magical, and uh, and of course you 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 were acting in studio, uh, and I think it, it, it could fit to a to a movie or to a Disney. Did you thought about this? Uh, I thought about that a lot. Yes, <laughs> it would be a, one one of my biggest dreams. You know, is to work with the writing movie soundtrack really i yeah. would love the big you know i love to write this music that gives you a feeling if you're able to get a feeling from music uh, then you've done a good job so when you're telling me that you get this disney feeling i feel i've done a good job and it makes me very very happy so thank you very much i mean it's not like i've been listening to disney songs and feel hmm, this could work uh, or I can use that, but I've been watching a lot of Disney and see, okay, typical Disney is this kinds of chords, the, this kind of instruments, uh, you have the cello uh, in the background, then you have the violin doing the melody, then the cello comes and does the melody, stuff like that, the, the, that you take inspiration from. You, you listen to other movies and say, what makes that movie music? that movie you know what what makes you for example if you listen to everybody oh yeah that's jurassic park but why is it jurassic park because it has uh, not only the melody it's the way it's being performed that gives you that same feeling as well and listen and, and then trying to do that to sound to make power metal sound Christmas, oh my God! What, how many Christmas so movies I've been watching when my girlfriend was, you know, out uh, to the lake swimming with her friends. I was sitting at home in the bright sunny day, uh, 25 degrees Celsius outside, and watching the Santa Claus with uh, Tim Allen. I was watching no. Uh, yeah, the Santa Claus, exactly, and uh, different Scrooge movies, watching that and listening to the music, and I realized there's a couple of instruments that all, you can always find. It's sleigh bell, glockenspiel, tumbler bells, and these uh, chimes, mm -hmm. some piano, and then uh, a lot of fast melodies, like uh, staccato. Bum, 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 bum. Stuff like that is very typical Christmas. So then I just took all these elements. Uh, you know, I, again, I did not steal anything. I just used the, got ins inspired. <coughs> and um, it worked pretty well, I think. Who did play the, those instruments? I did the glockenspiel and all, all the orchestrations I, I did. I weren't able, able to find someone who actually played it for real, so I used samples, but I have actually gotten some of the best samples you could find in the, you know, when it comes to sound libraries. Um, I really managed to find some good ones. And uh, then the sleigh bell, me and Chris is, were, are playing that. We actually record, we, we bought a big sleigh bell and we recorded that you know and that my friend is not easy because it's not like it's more like you know the the sound comes after you hit the bell a little bit so you need to be a little bit before the the hit 
all the time. And one of the songs, The Ghost of Christmas to Come, it's a bit like Tim Burton feeling to it. Yeah. And the, then the sleigh bell dink, 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 needs to go, uh, you know, off beat in that tempo. Dink, 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 dink. That that was very very hard, but we managed to go, get it quite quite good, I think. Yeah. Danny Elfman is the master. Danny Elfman, exactly. Yeah. Uh, of course, the artwork that we can see is uh, really really great, and it's really in a good mood. Would you? Will you play live with Majestica and for for this album, if if you can, of course. That would be something to do maybe around Christmas. I mean, if we're playing uh, grass pop, we're, we're booked for grass pop. But is grass pop? If grass pop is happening, mm. remains to see. Uh, but. <coughs> I do apologize. Um, if um, if we're playing grass pop, it would be weird, you know, to go out on stage to sing and perform Christmas songs. Yeah, that would be a little bit weird, but not impossible to <laughs> pull through. Uh, I think. I mean, maybe not the Christmas ballad. You know, in the middle of the day, in a hot summer day. I wish the joy of Christmas. I wish the joy would come to you. It's like ten thousand people standing there. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to Christmas, cold and uh, dark and uh, no. But yeah. maybe you know, Ghost of Christmas Past or uh, Jacob Marley, the the Ghost of Marley. Those kind of songs would maybe work. Okay. I I like to remind you. A live act. It was at Elfest, so yeah, I filmed that uh, on stage. It's a uh, twenty second. Uh, yeah, look that. You were singing on stage at Elfest, whereas uh, Joachim was eating and drinking. <laughs> Swedish tradition. Doesn't matter if you're in France performing a live headline show. You know, the Swedish traditions, they live on. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you feel on stage? Because I saw the guys bringing, bringing you the, the lyrics. And uh, yeah, it, was it stressful on stage? Uh, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> and it's not like uh, we're waking up. Okay, uh, we have to uh, we have to sing today. No, we woke up and uh, they told us. Okay, so we're doing one more show here today. We're like, what? But we're we're gonna do other things. We're going to Czech Republic or wherever we're going. No, we're gonna record. We're gonna do uh, one more show. And okay, let's do that. I go to the bus and then, okay, it's 40 minutes to show time. Maybe it's time to start warming up. So I go back, so it's like 30 minutes before the show time. That's when we usually get dressed and start warming up because us in the band, we don't need to be on stage until like 10 minutes before, just to make sure everything is fine, 10, 15 minutes. Um, but this time we did not only need to warm up, we also uh, got the information that Joachim can't sing. He came to me and Chris and said, Guys, I cannot talk anymore. I have no voice anymore. You have to sing tonight. It's like, holy shit, we have to sing. I haven't sang any of these songs except, you know, the harmonies. For the night, for the might of our Lord. Yeah. I'm usually singing, For the grace, for the might of our Lord. Can I lie so boldly? And now I'm gonna sing the melody all of a sudden and play. No time to rehearse. No time at all. Joe came like, I'm gonna sing the first three songs so people can hear that my voice is fucked up. Then I'm gonna leave it out, leave it over to you. Do one song each. And uh, that was stressful, especially since like I'm doing 
Um, for example, I don't know, um, Lost Battalion. And uh, the song before, Chris is singing, and we come to the last chorus, and there's no lyric sheets on the floor. It's like, oh my god, did they forget? <laughs> Guys, come on, where are the lyrics? I'm, I'm gonna, oh my god. And right when the song ends, they come out and they tape the lyric sheets. Oh, it was, it was stressful because they were writing and typing the lyrics on the side of the stage at the same time, you know, during the show. There was no time to lose, really. People were sitting there writing and printing, making sure everything worked. Oh my god, it was so stressful for everybody. And then it's like, yeah, let's bring out a table to celebrate uh, the Swedish holiday <laughs> on stage as well. But that, that was cool, that was fine. Yeah. We, yeah, that, that was fun. Um, it was nice to sing. To, uh, to sing, of course, but uh, a little heads up next time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you, too.